to another episode of Faha University. Whoop, 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 whoop. But first, there's wine. So on this episode of Faha University, we're gonna put the kitties away. Literally, like I told you, just made my son, he, he had to go. Because today, we're gonna be grown. And we're gonna be talking about Fajas and sex. Ah! I know, I know. Y'all been waiting for it, right? Maybe? No? It's just me that's a horn dog? Okay, okay. The question never really popped up in my mind as an area of focus until I had a client. She reached out and she was like, hey, I wasn't comfortable asking this on a larger or a public platform, but my dude and I were into BDSM. And I wanted to know when I could stop wearing the Faja so I could have sex. And I was like, interesting. Well, look, so this is a whole safe space, right? And I have never really put that much thought into this. But we're going to explore this together so I can give you a proper answer so you can get back to doing what you love. That's what this platform is here for, right? When it comes to having sex after plastic surgery, one of the things that matters the most is what type of procedure that you actually had. The procedures that have more stitching to it from tummy tucks and skin lifts, you're gonna have to be a little bit more gentle, um, especially as it pertains to if you have breast augmentations. I've had a client, I remember I was in Miami and she was there for a round two and she was a porn star and they got a little too wild on camera and she popped one of her implants and so she was down there for the doctor to fix it. It was so interesting looking. Anyways. When it comes to when you can have sex, that is contingent upon usually around your comfort level. Let's take a tummy tuck and skin lifts off the table. We're gonna focus on, let's say a BBL, if you had a breast reduction, a breast lift, and then a uh, regular lipo. When you can is usually based off of when your body is comfortable, but you still do need some support. This is where the Faja comes in. So you could totally just be basic and have Faja sex. All Fajas have little genital openings and you can just like bust it wide open. Y'all can't see, like I kicked my legs up. I don't know if, I, I still don't think you can see that. But you go bust it wide open and like your partner can come right in between there. Easy access, right? Like that's what we used to have in, when we were fast ass kids and like, oh my God, there's a home there, easy access. <laughs> but we're grown ups. Now, if you don't want to have Faja sex, then the other thing that I would suggest is getting a postpartum system or a waist trainer just to hold your midsection in, gravitational pull, and then the inertia from the thrusting motion of your partner, unless you're on top, we'll get to that. The thrusting motion of your partner can cause shifting, moving, just like crazy discomfort. I don't want to say it'll slow down your healing. That just sounds so extreme and absolute, but it's not a good look. You will be in more discomfort without some type of external support positions matter if you are earlier on in your healing journey let's say you're week one maybe week two you being on top will allow you to maintain a little bit more control thus you'll know what is your go no go point you'll know when to continue when to add pressure when to bounce, when not to bounce, you'll be able to control all that is going to be received by your body because in a sexual engagement, it's just not one way. It's something like the laws of gravity and shit, what goes up must go down. So what pushes this way, like your body is gonna receive that thrusting and that forward progression inertia. Whereas in if you're on top, you have full control over all of that. And if something's uncomfortable, you can readjust preferably in the Faja, but waist trainers are fine as well. If you opt to use a waist trainer, make sure you still have your foams in. You don't have to have the board. You still need to have a cami in. I know this isn't sexy at all. Just turn the lights off and like play smooth music and shit. If you're using a postpartum system, turn it around backwards. So most postpartum systems close in the front, have the front because if it's when it's typically and traditionally done the right way and the back portion of it is full coverage, turn it around and so you'll have that full coverage in the front and then you'll snap it and hook it in the back you can have somebody else do that for you have your partner do it before y'all like get it on riding that pony sip steve 
when it comes to having tummy tucks and skin lifts, you need to be cognizant of how much pressure your body is absorbing because you don't want it to have a negative impact on your stitches. Positions matter more than anything at all. For a tummy tuck, you have cowgirl, reverse cowgirl. If you want to do doggy style and you don't have the faja on, Put some pillows underneath of your abdominal torso area and then brace and support yourself that way. You might wind up having to need two or three pillows or like six if your pillows are flat. But if your pillows are flat, you have bigger problems. There's bugs in there and shit. Just go look it up. If you had a breast augmentation, then you want to create a crease if you are doing doggy style to support your breast tissue. So you'll have a pillow up here boobs will be there and then you'll have a pillow in your abdomen area again gauge the height of the pillows based off of your comfort level your own girth should match that of the pillows so if you are a thicker fluffier chick then you might need three pillows if you're slimmer then you might not need that many and then you also have to take into consideration the size of the breast your boobs if your boobs are sticking this far off your body then you need pillows to compensate in that area does that make sense let me know in the comments if that, if that makes sense afterwards because you tend to sweat uh this is why having more than one faja comes in handy take off your faja from having faja sex and switch into something else something clean something more comfortable and be careful when it comes to chafing with any garment there's a lot of friction that goes on when you're humping at least when i hump there's friction is that friction babe <laughs> You want to be careful of chafing in areas that would chafe grinding have a conversation with your partner to make sure that the garment and the material isn't being too abrasive on their skin or it's not uncomfortable for them but have at it have fun cheers here's to faha sex don't be good today when you were meant to be great if you have questions you know where to find me Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Perfectly Thai, for daily tips and surgery healing hacks. Follow us on Instagram for the latest products and join the free Facebook group, Time Out Post Op Corner, for in-depth medically backed instructions to optimize body goal journeys as we trailblaze history in post-op education.